Well, it's new because, um, you know, the new president of baseball operations and, um, you know, him meeting our staff, you know, really for the first time uh, today, uh, which is pretty cool. And having a lunch with Peter and some uh, half of our staff, I guess, were here. Um, but other than that, I think, you know, us knowing the players already is is good. Not a, not a ton of meetings about each guy because we already know who they are. Um, and just trying to figure out how they can get better now is mainly the conversation instead of like trying to figure out who they once were type deal. Um, but I, I, nothing has uh, really changed other than that. How is that dynamic, I guess, with a lot of you guys kind of catching Peter up to speed on the organization and kind of you know, providing observation of what he was as an outsider? What's that dynamic? I think it's a combination. I think Peter is uh, one of the brightest guys around and obviously really, sm uh, really smart. I've, I've already learned a lot from him uh, in the last couple weeks of how he sees things. I think... If I gave him my take on everybody, I don't think that's fair because I don't. I want him also to make his own opinions of, um, you know, people in the organization or players or whatever. And then if he, you know, we can bounce ideas off of each other as far as the players and staff and that type of thing. But um, yeah, I think it's a lot of organic conversations. At this time of year, there's a lot of evaluating players and processes. Is it time to do self evaluation to look kind of back at the manager you were over this season and look at areas where you think that you. Every day, yeah. I mean, that's that's part of growing, and I think it's. Um, you know, I tell the players every day, like you have a chance to either get better or worse when you enter uh, the clubhouse. It's the same thing for me and our staff. Um, I just don't believe in the saying like you are who you are. I always feel like there's a chance to get better, and I know that I was not perfect <laughs> by any means during the season. So, um, so you reflect every game, um, and then when the season ends, then. Yeah, I mean, I got my wife telling me all kinds of stuff that I need to get better at, right? So uh, there's um, there's always stuff to get better at. But yeah, you reflect and um, you know with you know young guys pitching moves, um, position changes, all that stuff. You try to figure out you know what you could have done better to move the needle even more. Um, and so yeah, there's a lot of reflection. What was different about the gig as a guy than maybe we expected? Like when you got the job a year ago, how did you expect it to be? And now that you're sitting here with you know, having done it for a full 162, what was different about it? Um, I didn't know if I could do it. I think that's the biggest one. Um, until you're a, a manager, I think there was some nerves and some anxiety to know, like, can I really do this thing? Um, because you you think there's, you know, if, you, if you, you're the bench coach or the first base coach or whatever it is, you could always go back to your hotel room or your house and say, oh, man, if if it was my, if I did it, I may have done it a different way, right? But then when you're actually in this seat, it can speed up and it gets fast and then you have to make the calls and then you have to talk to you guys after the game of, about the bad decisions or good decisions, whatever you made, right? So I think, um, so that was the little bit of anxiety going into this position. Um, and so I think this year is like, okay, I, I feel like um, I have an idea of how to navigate a game. Um, my staff was phenomenal. I was very fortunate to have a staff around me that, that covered all my weaknesses and blind spots. Um, and I really do believe that, like, I thought this, and I just told Kelly that I thought being surrounded by good people was the biggest um, separator And uh, as far as, like, going through 162. Now I'm convinced of it. It's, it's a people business, and when you have 162, you need to be surrounded by people to help you grow and to learn, um, but also have fun to come to the ballpark every single day. And if I don't have big personalities next to me, it's not fun coming to the ballpark. And I had that. So some things I had to like um, make sure it was real, and then some things I had to convince myself, like, am I actually ready for this position? And so I think year two is a little bit different. Did you have a moment during the season where you realized that you could do it? I had a, a couple moments where I thought I couldn't do it, <laughs> for sure. No, um, uh, so yeah, I think, um, so you, you have to figure out um, how to align yourself with um, front office analytics, player development, that whole thing, right? And to make sure that um, you, you just want to get it right. And whether it's sending a guy with infield in or if it's a bunt situation and they don't want you to bunt, whatever it is. And I'm not saying they don't want you to, but conversations. Um, and 
I think um, in the end, I think it was um, um, probably there was St. Louis when we pitched to Arenado. We can talk about that all the time when he walked us off. Um, there's conversations, uh, you know, not just our analytics, but uh, analytically, like you never want to put a guy on. Um, there's also uh, thoughts where, like, that's Nolan Arenado, right? So, um, so like, learning from that situation of, like, wow, am I ready to talk about that after the game? Because I don't know which is right still. I still don't know, right? I know I don't want Nolan Arenado to beat me, but there's a really hot Contreras behind him, right? Bases loaded, do I want a wild pitch? So certain situations like that um, where you're trying to figure out, man, am I ready for this or not? And that was, like, late in the season, right? Um, and there's other uh, times where, yeah, I think I thought I was ready when you're having tough conversations with the guys and then you see them buy in. Um, whether it was, you know, Jazz in the position change or Louie in the position change or um, maybe changing the closing role or that type of thing and having those really tough conversations and then you see them having success when you do move them. I think, you're like, all right, they're buying into our message. Maybe I am right for this. So I think there's different situations. Yeah, so I know I knew Bill in uh, in my Los Angeles days. He was the special assistant, um, salt to the earth, really good guy. Fits our staff really well. Um, has no ego in this thing. You know our staff. We don't have any ego in this thing. We're just trying to get people better and trying to win baseball games. And um, and I think he fits perfectly. They worked well together in St. Louis. Um, that's important to me because those hitting guys work so many hours together in the same office that if there's any sort of disconnect it doesn't work and so there needs to be some flow in uh, the same language also that uh, needs to be um, delivered to the player and it can't be just like a million different ideas and then these guys get lost uh, so that was important yeah brownie changed the whole offensive um, uh, mindset i think in our organization um, and he left it in a better spot that's the best thing you can say about a coach when he leaves right and I think when you do get guys plucked from your staff, that's a, that's a, I hate it for us, <laughs> but it's also a win uh, because that means you had success and guys want to want something from your staff um, because it was successful and and Brownie was successful and I'm happy for him. Do you think it'll stay similar with Wassey even though he's grown like the team is growing apart? Um, will come in that kind of that foundation of Brownie? Yeah, I mean it wasn't a finished product in, in, by any means, but I think there, the game planning was better. Um, uh, it wasn't just one way to hit a baseball anymore. It was, you know, there's everybody. It was it's individualized game plans. Um, Brownie was all in. Uh, he was great for us. Um, all the minor league side uh, bought in on his philosophy as well. So I don't anticipate it being uh, being too different. With the addition of Miller, we say that coaching staff is pretty much set for 2024. Uh, close. What does that mean? <laughs> close. That's what it means. There's not openings, but you can always add, right? Yeah, yeah. In different spots, <laughs> categories. <laughs> thought what we were really good at is we could pitch um, and so to have we have young pitching still that's coming through um, looking forward to see what Max Meyer brings in uh, uh, 2024 because he was a stud out of college he was hurt um, to see what he, that looks like whether it's a, I know he's building up as a starter right now um, but I'm looking forward to seeing him a full year of Yuri in the big leagues I'm looking forward to seeing him um, so I think you know we need to develop continue to develop high quality starters um, and I've heard it a million times I just said in an interview you're only as good as your bullpen a manager is only as good as his bullpen it really is um, and so we had some firepower some swing and miss in the bullpen with Tanner Scott acquired Matt Moore um, and obviously you know Puck and Brazabon and Nardi were, were you know a lot of swing and miss um, to be sustainable um, we got to we got to develop hitters. It's just what it is. We got to develop hitters. 
Um, and uh, you know, we got some young guys that are going to be there for a while, and Berger and Arias and Jazz and, and Dela. We got some good hitters. Um, but to continue to you know fight against uh, you know some some really big teams in our division, um, I think developing some hitters that you know we can control and can help us you know up and down um, the system. I think that's probably the next step. Yeah, I think drafting and developing um, is is the biggest component to that, right? Like, um, and I think that's uh, you know, Peter's working. You know, Peter has done a really good job in Tampa um, of, you know, of acquiring those those type of hitters, um, and you see that roster is has a lot of uh, Tampa guys on it, right? That they developed. Um, we don't have that. We don't have a lot of guys that were developed in our system. It's just the reality. Um, so getting to that point um, is going to be huge for us and uh, to make this thing sustainable for a long time. Yeah, so I tell all of our players or our staff to check in after Thanksgiving, but give these guys a break. Um, Pipe is the um, general manager in the DR. So he is checking in with a lot of those guys that are already there or are on their roster already. Um, so I, you know, I give them quite a, br a break um, from me and from our staff. They don't want to hear me right now anyways. Um, as much as I love them, uh, they don't want to hear from me right now. So I give them a break after Thanksgiving um, and then I'll start talking to them after the winter meetings. Yeah, I mean, they're in first place, so they're obviously doing something right. I mean, they're probably taking my spot here pretty soon uh, if I'm not careful. Um, yeah, Beef is awesome. We're fortunate to have him his first year managing down there, which is pretty special. And um, uh, to me, Pipe, I'm not sure how he's not a manager already, so I'm very lucky that he's next to me during the games. Um, but, yeah, it, it's, it's nice to have somebody down there watching players uh, internationally every single day during winter ball two guys uh, that are on my staff so um, you know not only some of our players that are in uh, are on that team but um, having conversations with you know our front office about guys that they like or they see that you know maybe we could potentially acquire is always nice to have I, I don't see that happening yet um, uh, jazz uh, really took off kind of the second part of the season in the outfield um, as our center fielder. Um, so I don't anticipate that happening uh, just yet. You mentioned, obviously, you know, the developing of some of those winners and still, you know, it takes time. How, you know, in the short term, I guess, how do you guys build up that offense and you know, free agency? How, do you, how many basketball players? I think that's a Peter question. <laughs> um, no, I I, uh, I really like our club. Obviously, we lost Solaire. That's a big bat. Um, that is a free agent. I guess we don't lose him, but he's a free agent. Um, and yeah, I think the we have, I guess, one catcher on our roster right now. Um, so I think that's probably you know a couple bats uh, on the radar of, of Peter. And Birdie played a really good um, shortstop when he was there. Um, so, you know, I, I'm sure we're looking for, you know, maybe some depth at that position. Um, but I, um, right now, you know, Birdie would, um, you know, probably get the bulk if it started today, obviously, uh, ja with Jazz and Center to ask, you know, answer your previous question. But um, as far as players are concerned, you know, we're talking through that right now. That's kind of why we're here. And, um, you know, we're, we're, I'm anticipating we're going to sign a couple guys, but. Um, you know, until that happens, I can't really say any names. Obviously, I'm just curious, like, you know, compared to last year, you know, you guys kind of made the postseason and all that. I'm not sure how involved you are, but have you heard, like, the perspective from free agents or, like, maybe teams in terms of, like, wanting, I'm not saying that's teams, but players wanting to come to the Marlins now that you guys have made a postseason? I do understand why it's not I think Miami's been a destination spot 
just because it's in Miami. I think a lot of guys want to play there. Um, a lot of families and a lot of players live in, in South Florida, so, or in Florida in general, I should say. Um, I think now that, um, you know, I, that we're relevant, that, you know, people would want to come. Um, yeah, and you, yeah, you hear, you know, players that want to come, um, but, at, you know, in the end, they're free agents and they can go wherever they want to go and most probably go where the money goes. <laughs> so that's just what free agent is. Um, but if you can get, convince some players that, um, you know, that, you know, we can maybe, you know, help them take them to the next step or, um, you know, they can live, you know, at home type thing. I think that's always um, a, a good thing for, for their families or whatever it is. So, uh, but I, to answer your question, I haven't reached out to all these free agents to see if they just want to come over here now. You mentioned catching. Uh, obviously, it's always tough to evaluate that uh, position, but how would, you like that as, uh, uh, how would you like the team to address uh, that necessity uh, going forward? You want a catcher that um, is a leader, that uh, pitchers love throwing to, um, that can uh, figure out how guys like um, Cabrera can throw more strikes, or that um, Lazardo can now be a Cy Young, or whatever it is, right? And um, that can uh, hold guys accountable. Um, so that's a big position. It's not just strictly an offensive position to me, um, because we are so pitching heavy um, that you need to be able to throw to a guy that you love throwing to. Um, the offensive part, obviously, we would love to have, um, but I think um, having a leader back there that um, uh, is really, really important, that's done it before. Your first time at the Winter Meetings as a manager, any difference from coming here in the past since you have been here in the past? Uh, last year was my first, but I haven't been to the Winter Meetings before that. Um, because I, I honestly I didn't really want to go, <laughs> so. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but uh, but it's uh, but I do I will say that um, it's it's been this year and last year is b again building relationships uh, over again right last year was like building all these relationships with the front office and I'm you know kind of doing it again. The like whether it's you and then the front office people because everyone kind of those are separate relationships. During the off season, you're saying? During then the season, like they're probably not all in the same room. Like yeah, the during the, during the season, I have you know we have meetings quite often. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean I, I would say like you know the minor leagues and you know all those guys being the affiliates being here, it's good to catch up. Um, but I also you know. We're, we're constantly talking to coaches up and down the organization and front office, so um, it's good to see them. Haven't seen them in a couple months, but um, those conversations are happen all the time. Think about a finished product, obviously, yet, but does, are you already thinking of like, oh, this is where like X could be playing, or this is where you know Vidal leaves, like, all right, this could be where he slots in. Have you already been considered Rachel? You think about that uh, when you you have your roster um, right before spring training um, because you just don't know what pieces are going to come or um, potential trades or what, however that, that that works. I think acquiring um, a bunch of really good athletes um, and really good big leaguers and then figuring it out after is always a, a plus. But I, there's not. Um, I know. I mean, Bruhan's playing down the DR. I talk to Pipe about him all the time. Um, I talk to, um, um, I know X, I have an idea of uh, where he can play and where he, um, I think, you know, outfield is probably going to be part of the equation as well this year. So, um, yeah, I mean, you think about your roster, but until, like, you get that set roster before spring training a week or two before, that's when you kind of navigate and, and see unless there's, like, a complete position change like we did with Jazz. Um, I mean, Tanner's going to pitch in the highest leverage situations we have. So um, whether that's, the, you know, I, you know, if you want to say closer, then that's fine. But, um, you know, we pitched him in the eighth inning and ninth inning last year. Um, and so you lose games in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning. It's not just the ninth. So if 
the meat of the order is in the eighth inning and I need Tanner there, there's a good chance he's going to pitch it because uh, I, if I don't use him in the ninth because we just lost in the eighth, then I'll, I'll be kicking myself. So um, I think he's our best pitcher in the bullpen, if that's what you're asking. Um, and he'll probably get the bulk there, but I will use him in spots to get out of big jams or to use the in the meat of the order in the eighth inning. I have, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have. Um, I think it's tough not to see, uh, you know, some of the highlights that are going on uh, in Japan or that went on in Japan. And um, yeah, I'm very aware of the talent that's out there and um, a very special pitcher um, who has swing and miss that you just cannot find. Um, it's tough to find, I should say, um, that has some outlier pitches that are tough to hit. And uh, when you miss bats, um, uh, there, it's usually translates here as well, and uh, so yeah, he's he's going to be very good for a long time. So the Nashville has been brought up as a potential landing spot for an expansion franchise if the league were ever to do that. You haven't spent a ton of time here, but you've played some minor league ball around the state of Tennessee. In your experience, what would make this such a good spot to get a team? Yeah, I love Nashville. Uh, we've been at CMAs. Uh, my wife is a huge country fan. So uh, yeah, I went to CMAs last year. Um, there's stuff to do, obviously, all around Nashville. Uh, we loved coming here. I played for the Memphis Redbirds for a number of years, and we came here all the time. And this was a place that you kind of circled on your calendar of like, we can't wait to go to Nashville. Um, I, I think, the first of all, the people here are incredible. The fan base, sports fan base here, um, is in Tennessee is uh, you know really really good um, college and professional um, so I think it'd be a, a destination place um, that a lot of people would want to come and see a professional play uh, team play. Skip, were you surprised at all with just the D-backs and the Rangers and how the whole playoffs unfolded and does it give you hope as well that you know the D-backs you, you could be there too possibly? Um, I thought it was great for the game. Um, I'm not surprised because it's humans playing humans and you just never know once you get into the playoffs you just don't know what's going to happen um, when you play uh, the Diamondbacks you know how hard they are uh, to play against and to game plan against because of the platoon situations that they have they can beat you with speed they have two aces on the mound with, with Kelly and, and uh, Zach so it wasn't surprising because of how well they were coached um, the firepower that the Texas Rangers had. It wasn't surprising. They kicked our butt in Arlington uh, this year. So that was not surprising at all to see them. But um, it's the hottest teams usually in, in October. And also not surprised because Arizona was a good team. So I don't want people to think that like, oh man, I can't believe Arizona got, th they were a good team. Um, and really, again, really well coached. So um, it wasn't surprise, uh, sur surprising at all other than like, I thought Philly was just so good, um, but uh, but you know either one of those teams making it was uh, really good for baseball and um, and happy for them. Good, all right. Thanks. You got it. <laughs>